so in the last session uh, we have discussed about how to what is the meaning of lightweight process that is said what is the parallel processing what is the meaning of multi threading and why why we uh, need multi threading how it can increase the throughput of the system so we have discussed that point and we have also seen an example of how to create a thread in java we will continue with our discussion with the same point so uh, let me share my screen with everyone it's screen visible to everyone okay great. this was the program that we did in the last session we minimize this one Now, suppose we need to use a multi-threading approach to increase the throughput of a system. I am sure that you people are aware of a concept called as free lunch, right? So till the uh, 1998, uh, 1999, when the uh, processors were single core. That time, uh, programmers uh, used to call a term called as a free lunch. That means without uh, doing much effort, the software will increase its productivity or increase its performance. How that was possible? Let's understand that. So, let's say you have a computer. This is the computer that you have. And on this computer, you have one CPU. Let's say this is CPU. And you have already uh, developed application which can exploit all the capacity the CPU have. And you are already, you are already uh, uh, let's say this computer also have something called as, uh, uh, let's say call, call this device as an IO. So uh, people have already written the programs in the style that they will share the resources on time basis and they will use uh, when they need a CPU. They will use a CPU. When they need I/O, they will need uh, they will use I/O. So uh, it was working fine. And if let's say uh, how to improve the performance of an overall computer system. So what will happen is uh, in some time frame, Intel will come up with an advanced chip, advanced CPU, and this CPU and this I/O device will have an increased performance. That is, uh, the they will have more frequency. As the CPU and IO devices have more frequency that they can work on, automatically the number of instructions this computer can execute are increased, or the number of instructions that this computer can handle in one time unit is increased. So automatically software becomes fast. So let's say I have a uh, some software uh, which have let's say some units inside it. Let's say uh, time unit one, time unit two, three and four. So let's say uh, CPU, first generation CPU, and these are the time unit. First unit, second unit, third unit, two, and fifth. So this program needs five T cycles, T unit or T cycles of this CPU. Now let's say this one T cycle of a, a computer's uh, execution time, in real world, it takes one minute, right? So to execute this five T units, your real world uh, time will be five minutes. Now this is the first generation CPU. Let's say you have a second generation CPU, which needs 50 seconds to execute one time unit. So automatically the total computer, total program, instead of taking five minutes, now it will take two and a half minutes to complete its job. Now by the third generation, let's say this time drop to 10 seconds per time unit. So you will need only half a minute, only 0.5 minutes to execute this program. 
and what programmer has to has done about it nothing so why the program is efficient programmer have program have become efficient like its time has dropped from 5 minutes to simply to 5 second 0.5 minutes so it's a huge increment a uh, huge improvement in execution time but this execution time improvement is not because of the programmer's uh, what we can say writing optimized code or exploiting hardware this performance improvement is simply the gain of cpu enhancement or simply because cpu has become more powerful so hardware engineers are having some job like they need to increase the performance of their hardware they need to create a new hardware with some more capability but for a software engineer this is a kind of a freelance that the person have developed a one simple program and the program is executing on latest hardware with less and less time so the concept was freelance now things changed in 1999 1998 and 1999 border when the hardware come with multiple cpu on it now there were two cpu we call this as core multiple cores on a single chip now see as there are two cpus available you can schedule two instructions from the same program at the same time now here the software person's job become uh, hectic like the person has to completely rewrite the software to make use of this two cpus that are available in your computer now earlier there was only one cpu so at such program was not required to be modified because you have already written a program which can take help of a cpu and a io device and execute so if cpu is becoming powerful there is nothing for a programmer to do but as soon as there are two cores or two cpus that are available in a computer now program need to be rewritten program need to be rewritten in the style that it can take advantage of having multiple cores on single chip or multiple cpus in single computer now this modification like how you can exploit this multiple uh, cpu chips that are available on your computer is up to the programmer like let's say this instruction 1 and instruction 2 have nothing in common and this two instructions can execute at the same time then it's a job of a programmer that he must write a code that will schedule the instruction 1 on cpu 1 and instruction 2 on cpu 2 and this both instructions execute at the same time and that will follow throughout the program not only throughout the program throughout the system that you have to find out the instructions which can go in parallel and schedule those number of instructions at the same time so the free lunch concept was broken and the software people have to write uh, efficient code which, which can exploit the hardware architecture which is available so the threading and multi processing uh, came in picture any doubt or uh, in this concept what is a free lunch and all or you got the concept of uh, what is like having multiple cores on a computer and how to exploit them it's up to programmer okay so got it right so let me minimize this now uh, let's do understand like yesterday we have seen how to create a thread so let's create one more scenario let me create a scenario uh, here let me use, use a blank document now let's say uh, you have two programs program 1 and program 2 right so we have two programs and this programs have nothing in common these programs have nothing in common and they are they uh, they can they are written in a style that they can uh, exploit the hardware available like they can schedule their instructions in parallel whenever it is possible and let's say you have a cpu uh you have a computer in where there are two cores two cores available so what may happen is like program 1 get scheduled on the core 1 and program 2 get scheduled on the core number 2 and the execution starts at the same time so when these programs have nothing in common that is great it's fine that the both programs are going to cpu 1 and cpu 2 at the same time and the job is getting efficiently done but the issue started let's understand that uh, let's say uh, this is a program which is managing a warehouse this is the program which is managing a warehouse i am sure that you have seen this scenario in the operating system uh, in the os1 studies that you are right now undertaking as an a course right 
so if let's say these programs are uh, handling warehouse or uh, uh, let's say this is the producer and consumer program one is a producer and one is a consumer right so one party is supposed to add goods say the good has to be added and one party is supposed to consume the goods so uh, 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 what we are goods goods are consumed minus so when you add a good number of goods will be added by one when you consume a good number of goods will be minus by one and this both programs are scheduled at the same time on a cpu so cpu1 cpu2 so let's say producer is uh, working uh, executing on cpu1 and the consumer is executing on cpu2 now in this scenario what could go wrong is as both the programs are executing at the same time let's say you are maintaining a log you are maintaining a log log register what is this log of log of how many goods are available so this log contains a value which keeps a track of how many goods are available in the store so let's say at current time uh, time con uh, time minute you have four goods available in your store or you're in, in your warehouse now let's say the producer program produced a good and it goes to the cpu and the good becomes available so the good 4 plus 1 you will have a new sum of number of goods available and the log entry will modify to 5 now you have a new good available after this the consumer came in picture and it executed the consumption cycle and you are going to consume one good out of five goods so again the sum will be come back to the four so one execution cycle of a producer and one consumer cycle will set the value of log where it was originally that is four so total number of goods available after one consumer and one producer execution still comes back to four now what could go wrong here is let's say this is a variable this is the register this is the variable so producer and consumer as they both are executing at the same time they read the value of this log the value of the log currently was 4 so they both got the value of log as 4 right and both programs are going at the same time let's say this log is written on a disk in a file so they both program these both programs opened up a disk file they read the value of this log variable which is 4 now they both are working on the value which is called as 4 now producer produced a good so the 4 plus 1 become 5 for their exploiting and it is going to happen and the value say assume that the let's assume that have the value of three and if the producer writes the second so the new value will be 5 on which the future operations will execute so it doesn't matter whether the producer writes first or the consumer writes first the value of the log is not consistent the value of the log has been changed and it is not a good case sure so uh, 
voice is breaking voice is breaking voice is not clear so you you are not audible am i audible now now okay uh so i'll repeat in short uh, let me clear yeah. So let's say we have one producer and one consumer. I'm repeating the story. It's with us on our computer, so core one and core two, right? So, and this both core few cores. That means we two instructions at the same time. For then we have two program. Let's call this program. Second program is called as uh, C1. So P stands for producer, P stands for consumer. So we have a one consumer and one producer. So and also we have a warehouse, or we have a throughput.
Am I audible now? Huh? All right. 